بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم عليه الصلاه والسلام ordered us to leave that which we are in doubt about to leave and avoid waswas you know to leave avoid to avoid uh, the whisperings of the shaitan and the whisperings of those things which cause us to have doubt in our heart and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said in an authentic hadith صلى الله عليه وسلم قال عن ابي محمد حسن الحسن بن علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهما سبت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وريحانته قال حفظت من رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم دعما يريبك الى ما لا يريبك رواه ترمذي ونسائي وقال ترمذي حديث حسن صحيح ان هذا حديث ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم that was narrated on ابي محمد الحسن بن ابي ابن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهم علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنهما may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them and all the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as ahlul sunnah loves ahlul bayt loves the family of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regardless of whether it's the khas meaning the family that is has blood ties to the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or am meaning those who follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from his companions radiyallahu ta'ala anhum majma'in and those who came after them the salaf as-salih radwanallahi alayhim ajma'in he said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he heard from the messenger of allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say he said he memorized or he he memorized from the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam leave that which you have doubt for that which you do not have doubt and this was narrated in tirmidhi collected in tirmidhi wa nisa'i uh, and imam tirmidhi said it was a hadith hasan sahih in this hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is immense benefit as usual from the ahadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and it shows us the madhhab of the salaf as-salih radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in which was to leave those things which are unclear to leave the doubtful things that's the madhhab of the salaf that's how the salaf were unlike us we get involved in everything doubtful we do things and then we ask if it's halal after we finished we always give ourselves the benefit of the doubt instead of looking to see whether something is lawful or not or in another way in which we fall into this doubtfulness for example we hear news or we hear something about mentioned about someone someone who's a person known for khair a person known for wara for taqwa and known for humility and piety but yet as soon as we hear something negative and bad we run to that and we accept that without verifying so this hadith shows us the madhhab of the salaf is not that is that we make tathabbut the salaf they made tathabbut and when they had doubtful when they were in doubt about something they left it because they wanted to make sure that they were not guilty of falling into the haram and falling into those things which caused them to have any doubt within related to their religion 
some of the benefits we gain from this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. As we mentioned, that one of the benefits the scholars mention is that from this hadith we learn that one of the ways in which we gain knowledge is by hifd, is by memorizing. That memorization, memorization is one of the means to preserving and protecting knowledge. Uh, and another benefit from this hadith is this hadith illustrates for us the importance of spreading knowledge of spreading knowledge and, and, and practicing al-amal ala nashr al-ilm so it teaches us to to, pra, uh, to to practice spreading the knowledge to disseminate knowledge if we are, have we have the ability to do so another benefit of this hadith is that it also shows us the importance of avoiding those things that which are doubtful anything that we have doubt about not jumping into those issues that we have doubt about and those issues in which we have no knowledge about or little knowledge about but instead this hadith illustrates for us the importance of staying away from doubtful matters as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in another hadith وَاتَّقُوا shubahat. He said, and avoid the shubahat, avoid those things which are doubtful. You know, that the halal is, is, is clear and the haram is clear. And between them is issues which are doubtful. And many people are unaware of that, except for Ahl al-ilm. So this hadith illustrates for us the importance of staying away from that which is doubtful. Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us to protect ourselves from the waswas waswas of the shaitan. That the shaitan will whisper to us in many respects and try to corrupt us in our religion. Try to get us to leave our religion or distort our religion and fall into bid'ah. Or continue or or try to make... uh, to spread facade in our ibadah, you know, to nullify our ibadah and corrupt our ibadah, our worship. For example, one way in which the shaitan and the waswas comes to us is when we're in the prayer. Some people, they can't even hardly begin their prayer because they say, oh, my niya wasn't correct. So they continue to make takbir to ihram, Allahu Akbar, and then they, they have doubt. Did I really say uh, Allahu Akbar? Or was my niya really correct? Then they do it again. Then they do it again. Some people, they do it, and it's as if they they might miss a, raka, a whole raka with the imam. Strictly because of waswas. And this is from the shaitan. That is not something that is legislated in Islam. That you have to continue to, 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 to doubt, for, doubt yourself and listen to that which is doubtful. Another benefit from this hadith is it also illustrates for us the importance, the benefit of, of, of God-fearfulness, of having taqwa, and the benefit of uh, being humble and pious. It also illustrates for us this hadith, the importance to, to strive to be calm in our hearts, to have a calm heart, tu'ma'nina tu'ma'nina qalb, that your heart should be at ease with regards to your worship, with regards to uh, your daily living, that you should have be at ease when you are in iman, when you're building yourself and basing your life upon iman, you're striving to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you can find that contentness in your heart. And that we should strive to have that, especially in ibadah, in worship. Another benefit that this hadith shows us, which is very important, it shows us the importance of taking the safest route and avoiding doubtful things. So when it comes to issues of worship, that we take that which is ahwat, that which which is safest and which 
will help cover us if there's ikhtilaf and there's difference of opinion and the dalil is very strong for the differences and we don't have the ability to, to make turjih to look and see which is more correct in an issue then the ahwat the safest thing is to take the safest path that which requires a little bit more from us that will keep us safe and that's one of the things we gain from this hadith and that will help us stay away from that which has to do with shubahat those things which are doubtful Another benefit of this hadith is it shows us the importance of leaving that leaving doubtfulness and being firm on yaqeen. And from this we there's a beautiful principle in fiqh that the ulama the ulama of usul that they have deduced from this hadith and many other ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is Al-Yaqeen la, la yuzul al-Yaqeen bi-shak Or Al-Shak la yuzul bil-Yaqeen uh, uh, No, uh, uh, bil-Aqs uh, That Al-Yaqeen la yuzul bil-Shak That that which you're certain about Is not removed by that which you're doubtful about So for example The person Who has doubt with regards to their pure their wudu am i on wudu now it's time for prayer i have doubt about this i'm not sure i remember i was on wudu i was certain i had wudu at one point but i'm in doubt i have shuck i have doubtfulness on whether i broke it or not so then you go back to that which the yaqeen that which you're certain of you're certain that you were once on tahara and wudu so you are on wudu and you leave the doubt the doubt it has no place in the shara. So you leave the doubtfulness and you go to that which is yaqeen. You go to that which is certain. And you were certain that you were on purification, so you are on wudu and it's permissible for you to pray. But since you doubted that you had broke your wudu, you weren't sure, then that you leave. And, the, and vice versa. If you are ready to pray and you remember for certain that you broke your wudu at one point, and you can't, you have doubt on whether you made tahara or you purified yourself and made wudu after that, then you go back to that which you're certain of, which is that you had broke your wudu and you doubted that you made tahara, so you leave the doubt. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.